Today we're talking about FLM tripods, specifically about the CP30S4 and the CP30L4. So I wanted to talk about the FLM CP30S4 and the L4 because when I was looking for tripods and settled on the FLM brand, I debated a long time about which one to get. Should I get the S4, the small version, or should I get the L4, the large version? So I sort of want to talk through that. I know when I was looking, it would have been super helpful to see some videos and see some actual comparisons side by side to see what they look like, how tall they were. Great reading a spec sheet, but sometimes it's just nice to see them in person, and that's what we're going to do today. So why FLM tripods? Well, there's all sorts of tripods out there from the inexpensive $50, $60 tripods all the way up to the $1,000 tripods and everything in between. And I really felt like I was looking for a high quality tripod in that mid-range price. I feel like there are quality options out there. It's just sort of finding the right one without having to overpay for quality. And as I did my research, I read online and I watched videos. I came across the centercolumn.com that referenced the FLM tripods. And I did a little more research on those, more reading reviews on websites, watching videos, and they just seemed like a really good quality tripod. We'll dive into the specs in a little bit, but essentially it was a mid-range price, seemed to be made of quality materials, seemed to be lightweight, and ticked a lot of the boxes that I was looking for in a tripod. So that's why FLM. So once I decided on an FLM tripod, then I had to choose which model. And really the CP30 series seemed just about the right fit for me, 30 being the 30 millimeter diameter up here on the upper leg, and of course the other legs get smaller. And I was debating between do I get the S4 version, which is the small of the CP30, or do I get the large version of the CP30? And at the particular time I was looking to do some travel, I was going to set the fly out west, and the current tripod I was using was just, it was a good tripod, but it was big, bulky, stuck up a lot above the bag. So I was like, well, if I'm going to get something different, I should get one that's a little more compact, lightweight, and would serve me well for traveling in addition to my normal hiking around on tight trails and things like that. So at that particular time, nearly two years ago, I went with the CP30 S4, which is the small version. And it's been a great tripod. I've been using this one for the past two years. It's been all across the US. Probably get out and use it about once a week, maybe more. And it's just been a really great high quality tripod. So I've been super happy with this tripod. I have zero complaints. The one little thing I wanted was sometimes I wish I had just a little bit more height to the tripod. So right now this is up at its max height right here. And most of the time it's great. It gets a camera up by the time you get the ball head and you got the camera up here, it's sitting right here, nice eye level and works. But there's certain situations, maybe uneven ground, or sometimes you just wanna get a little higher, maybe above some obstruction or something like that. It'd be nice to have something a little taller. So that got my eye thinking, well, maybe I should get a taller tripod too, even though I'd love to travel with this and when I'm hiking more difficult trails, this is a perfect fit because it doesn't catch on things when it's on the side of the pack. I was like, what about those other trails where it's close to the car or it's a big wide trail or something like that? So I had my eye on the FLM CP30 L4, which is the large version, and it's much taller as you can see right here. So recently there was a sale on FLM tripods and I was like, you know, that's a pretty good price on the tripod. Let me pick it up. I'd like to try it out and see how I like it. So I received this one a little over a week ago and I really haven't had a chance to use it a whole lot yet. But just from the feel, the action, to extending it, legs up, down, everything like that, I know it's gonna be just as quality as this one. So I feel pretty comfortable as far as the quality goes because I've been using this one so long. But with that said, I thought it'd be useful for people that are in the same spot as me as to which FOM tripod do I go with? Do I want the S4, the small version, or the L4, the large version, I thought this would be a handy little video to see them side by side. Now they do make an M version, which is the medium version, which obviously comes in a little in between. So if you're really sort of wanting something in between that, you can do. I felt like I would be served very well by having this option as one choice and this option as the other. So let's dive into a comparison of the two tripods. Let's talk about the common features first. First, they are 10 ply carbon in the legs. They both have that. They both have the same leg diameter starting with a 30 millimeter diameter at the top, 26, I believe, 22 and 19 at the fourth. So each one of them are like that. Uses aluminum twist locks. So if you like the twist locks, they're great. I love them. They're aluminum. There's no rubber cover on them. So like hot, cold, things like that. They're not going to cause you trouble by sort of spinning on the, the twist lock. So that's super handy. I've had zero problems with these. The load capacity for these tripods is 44 pounds. They both have that. And in the feet, you can swap them out. Currently I have the rubberized feet on here, but they also come with the spike feet and you can swap those out if you want to. So these two tripods have all of that in common and that's why I feel pretty comfortable even though I have not had this one out in the field a lot with actual photography. It shares so many of the common characteristics that as well as this one has served me, I'm confident this one will do the same. So let's look at where they're different. 
Okay, first, the obvious difference. Max height is different. Now, I do have ball heads on both of these. I've got a Surui K30X on here, and I've got an Enrol N44 on here. So different heads, but the max height on this one is 53 inches. That's the S4, is 53 inches. And over here on the L4, it's 68 inches. Obviously, here I am. I'm about 5'11", if you're wondering. I'm on a relatively flat surface. Here's S4 version. L4 version. Gonna get the ball heads if you wanna look at the, the base. Tripod top is right there. But again, much, much taller. And they do that obviously by just having longer leg lengths. They're same diameter, but they're longer leg lengths, which is why it's so much taller. Now, neither tripod has a center column, so both their minimum height is 3.6 inches. So the legs will open all the way out like this. Obviously, you'd collapse this and you can get it down to 3.6s off the ground. So they both can get down pretty low, which is what I like. And one of the advantages for me of not having a center column is I do like to do some lower compositions. And without a center column, it makes it nice and easy to get down low without having to flip a center column or remove a center column or anything like that. So I find that very handy. They do both have the same minimum heights. Okay, folded heights. This is a big one. Let's go ahead and collapse this guy real quick because this is worth seeing. This is one of the big things, at least for me, So the S4, 18.88 inches, nice and compact. And that's one of the reasons why when I was looking for a tripod for traveling or putting on the side of my bag on tight trails, I wanted something that didn't stick up too much. It draws way less attention going through the airport. I tend to strap this on the outside of my camera bag. I usually remove the ball head, but it doesn't attract a lot of attention because it's so compact. I can sort of snug it right in there and it doesn't catch anyone's eye. When you're hiking on a narrow trail where there's lots of branches or rock walls or things like that, a tall tripod will sometimes stick a little bit above your backpack and it's catching on things and pulling you back. This sort of tucks right in, even with the ball head on, I can sort of tuck it right in there and it makes it nice and easy to move along those tighter trails without getting caught on branches or brushing against stone walls. Let's take a look at the L4. L4, let's get this collapsed here. Looks like it's giant. So here's the L4 collapsed. It is 23 inches when collapsed. So again, it's about four inches taller than the S4. So that means when it's along the side of your pack, it can stick up there a little above, might get caught on more branches or more rock, which is doable, but it is a compromise. You just want to be careful if you're in that type of situation. When traveling, it would stick higher up above the camera bag when I had it attached to it. I could always put it in checked luggage or something like that. So let's compare the two side by side. You can see right there, that's the size when they're collapsed. Big deciding factor for me when choosing a tripod. Okay, and one little interesting thing is, what's the height when the last leg is retracted? So let's pop that up real quick here. Obviously, the S4 is not gonna be as tall. What I think is interesting is, let's get the S4 out here. So there's the S4, you can barely see it down here, but it's right there. It is 41 inches tall when the last leg, so when this leg section is collapsed, it is 41 inches tall. Low on the short side. I've used it like that plenty of times. It does put it about waist height for me, so it's sort of cool, but that's how tall. Now, the interesting thing is the L4, when it has the last leg collapsed, is just about as tall as the S4 when all legs are out. So here it is right here at 51 and a half inches with the last leg collapsed. So let's compare it real quick. Let's go ahead and extend the S4, that bottom leg. So the L4 last extension collapse is just a little bit shorter than the S4 with both legs out. Now what's that mean? It means I can get my normal shooting height with only expending two of my leg sections. It gives me a little bit of extra stability because I'm not having to extend that smallest diameter leg. Get lots of stability out of it by only extending two. And I have pretty much the same working height as my S4. I think that's pretty cool. And then finally, weight of the tripods. The S4 is 2.9 pounds and the L4 is 3.1 pounds. So not a very big difference between the two tripods and weight to get that extra height. Okay, so getting a little bit of rain here. I'm gonna to try to wrap this up real quick. You wanna know which one you should get. Well, I'm gonna keep both of mine because I think it's super useful. I travel often enough. I like to be able to have the S4 with me when I can and the L4 when I'm close to home. This is gonna see a lot of use in my local areas. This will see more use when I'm traveling or if I'm really doing some scrambling around on some trail. But if you're at home and you're only gonna buy one, really comes down to two things to me. Which is more important to you, max height or folded height? 
This one, you get lots of max height, but it's not going to fold down as far. So if you're doing a lot of traveling or you are concerned about that, it doesn't collapse as far. Whereas this one collapses down nice and small. So if collapsed height is important to you, this one is the one to go with. You're just going to take a sacrifice on the max height. And it really sort of boils down to that. Do you care more about how high your tripod goes or how collapsed your tripod goes? For me, in some situations, that collapse height is important. Like I said, if I'm flying on a plane, I like it to fit right alongside my camera bag so I have my tripod with me, or if I'm hiking that tight trail with lots of rock or branches right next to me. If those two aren't situations, having the max height is gonna be cool, it's gonna be nice to have, and that's it. So just think about the kind of photography you do, how often you travel, do you care about the collapse height when you travel, or does max height just, you're gonna make the compromise on collapse? Those are the two biggest factors. I think the weight between the two is so close, it's not even really a consideration. So I don't even really think about that. Either way you go, whichever one you choose, the S4, the L4, or maybe you go look at the M4, I really don't think you can go wrong with FLM tripods. I've been a super happy FLM user. I recommend anybody that's looking for a new tripod. Like I said, this S4 has been with me for just about two years. It's been rain, snow, up, down trails on the side of my bag, flown across the country multiple times, and it's in great shape. So if you're looking for a tripod, even if it's not one of the CP30s, maybe one of the ones with the larger diameter legs or something like that, take a look at the FLM line of tripods. They're great tripods. They've served me well, and I think they'll serve you well too. Okay, let me know down in the comments, what do you think? Which is more important, max height of a tripod or collapsed height of the tripod? Which one do you prefer? Or am I leaving some variable out? Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear your opinion on max height versus collapsed height and which one you tend to go with. So hopefully you found this video helpful. I'm gonna duck out of here. The rain's coming down even more. So uh, it's time for me to go get my stuff packed up. I actually have a bit of a hike back to the car. But anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. And if you wanna see future landscape photography content from me, including tips, tricks, behind the scenes, mini gear reviews, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And thank you for watching.